Military working dogs are used right across defence. They're used in a range of roles, either in the protection arena or in the detection arena, and sometimes in both. They have a physical presence that, that, that is gold dust. To a handler, they are everything, particularly on operations. It's their exceptional ability to make that decisive action in the operation that's going to change the course and allow you to succeed. We were still in the immediate threat at that point, so I carried him out of the compound and he was clearly in a bad way. Then myself and the medic who was on the ground at the time both just started working on him. From the moment he got hit and all the way until the extraction, he was under constant medical care. We uh, received a call very early in the day or in the morning. Um, actually, my uh, locally government issued phone was you know, just blowing up with phone calls and text messages. But four, that's when you know the team started getting together. Um, the main team went out to the clinic. He had some pretty significant injuries, so he had a gunshot wound to his right thigh, and then he also had a secondary gunshot wound that went through his left paw. We had to perform an amputation on that paw that just unfortunately was not able to be recovered. We were getting volunteers from everywhere just because they had heard what he did and how he sacrificed his life potentially to, to protect his team. He became family almost. We wanted to know everything that was happening with Kuno from what medication he got to how much and how he felt and um, if he ate. So it was very, it was very special. We had um, a special bond between all of us and with Kuno. The morning when um, Kuno got injured, I got a text message and at first, I didn't really believe it. I then returned to theatre the day after with a vet to pick Kuno up. When we arrived to collect him, he was quite heavily sedated. He was um, all bandaged up, and we received him onto our aircraft. We weren't entirely sure he was going to make the flight. The drugs that we'd used to stabilise him and the altitude, they, they play tricks on the body. At one point, he did actually raise quite a high temperature. Uh, so we then um, had to ask the crew to uh, turn the temperature down in the whole of the cabin. This meant that all the soldiers had to have a bit of a chilly ride home, but there was absolutely no complaints. We spent quite a long time putting together primarily the right leg where the muscles had been severed. He showed tremendous determination and a will not just to live, but to start walking again. Kuno is the first British military working dog to be fitted with a prosthetic leg. It was really important for us that we weren't putting him through anything unnecessary. We knew all along that if, if there was a, a dog that would do well, it was Kuno. Kuno was really good with his uh, rehabilitation exercises. He was actually quite a fun patient and everybody was happy to, to help out with those. Once he had his prosthetic foot um, fitted, he then began his hydrotherapy sessions. Uh, became quite a cheeky monkey in the hydrotherapy treadmill and generally soaked anybody that was involved um, with those sessions with him. We'd never seen anything quite like it with Kuno having the brace on his right leg and the prosthetic foot on his left leg. 
it took him a little bit of time to get used to, but he just got on with it and went, yeah, let's go. Kuno's now out of the military. He's, he's been rehomed. He's essentially retired. He's still stimulated mentally and physically despite his injuries. A dog like that can't just, you know, take a back seat and, and do nothing for the rest of his life. I can't talk for everyone else, but I think everyone will agree with me that when you see a dog, especially a dog like Kuno, on the ground working, doing his thing, it just makes everyone feel a lot more confident that chances of mission success have greatly increased. The fact that partway through it he was injured, but that didn't deter him, I think it's just an enormous tribute to him that he, he managed to follow through and do his duty. Knowing what these you know, military working dogs, what they do, it's just, it's, it's humbling to be able to, you know, process hours later of, you know, what could have happened if something went wrong. I still talk to you, my four-year-old daughter about, you know, Kuna, you know, because um, uh, he really made an impact on all of us. He is just the most wonderful, crazy dog. It's just extremely exciting to see him receive the PDSA Dickin Medal. The training he's gone through, the amount of ops he's gone through, the amount of times he's like come under gunfire, saved blokes' lives. So he definitely deserves this this medal, definitely. It's a testament to Kuno's ability and his his courage and his strength that he, he received this award. I couldn't be more proud of him. It's a wonderful story, and I, I'm so glad that that he's come through. And for all of those people who've supported him through that, they've done a ter terrific job. Kuno's actions on this mission have more than earned him this honour, and I have the absolute pleasure of joining our hero to make this very special presentation of the PDSA Dickin Medal for gallantry and devotion to duty to Kuno.